Welcome to the Top Secret Wedding Podcast. Our top secret tip for today is to reach out to other vendors that you're working with on any upcoming weddings. Introduce yourself, it'll win them over. Want to learn how to support other vendors and make them look good on the wedding day? Listen to this podcast. This is the Top Secret Wedding Podcast, where we share top secret tips to help you take your wedding game to the next level. I'm Annika, and I'm a wedding coordinator, enthusiast, and venue manager for one of the best venues in Idaho. I'm Chris, and I'm a DJ, master of ceremonies, and all-around lover of weddings. We're on a mission to improve weddings and wedding professionals everywhere. Today, we're talking about how to take care of vendors. I think it's so important that you're taking care of the people around you. So important. (laughs) Yeah. Um... I I mean, we could ask the question, why should we take care of other vendors? Um, but I think just be a good person. I was going to say, because you want to be a good person. <laughs> right. It's that difficult. They, and these people in our wedding industry, we are, we don't have like normal coworkers. For right. the most these part. are your coworkers. These are your coworkers. So. so if you treat them poorly. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a good thing. Um mm-hmm. I think also it just leads to the success of the wedding. If you're setting other people up for success, it's just it's going to make your job easier and going to make yes you look better. I think that's such a big thing is, you know, if you set all the other vendors up for success, it's going to make all of your guys' jobs so much easier. Yeah. You know, like you all succeed as a team. Yeah. So. And when I work with somebody that sets me up for success and they obviously they have to do a good job too. That leads to referrals. Like, I'm happy to refer somebody that I like working with. Exactly. um, Do we lay down some kind of ground rules? Yeah. Yeah, let's lay down some ground rules. Dude, number one, above anything, communicate. You have to communicate. Communicate. Like, that is probably, I don't know if it's the easiest, but it should be the easiest thing. It should be. Yeah. But if you communicate, that's just going to make it all so much easier. Yeah, I, and I think that starts before the wedding. I agree. I agree. It should be in communication before the wedding. I did a wedding this last weekend in Jackson, and um, at the end of the night, I just mentioned the, the planner and I were talking about, you know, what we might have done differently. Yeah. Uh, and I said, I wish we would have communicated before yeah. the day of, because this, this was a planner that I'd worked with before, but she sent one of her um, one of her people, and she was great. I just wish that we had a relationship before the day of the same with the photographer, the same with the officiant, so that we are all already cohesive on the day of. Exactly. Well, and I feel like, too, you know, once you start working with certain vendors over and over again, like, for example, whenever I have a bride that's like, oh, we have Chris, and I'm like, oh, you've got Chris? Easy. Like, that's only happened because we've communicated and we're on the same page. You know, anytime you hear a vendor that you don't know, you that should be like one of the first things is you reach out and you say, hey, like, let's chat. You yeah. Know? Let's get on the same page. Yeah. So how can I, I, I call them and I ask, how can I support you? What, what can yeah, I do to I love that. help you do your job? And, yeah. Uh, hopefully they're asking the same thing. Um, so, yeah, that's before the wedding. Then at the wedding, obviously, communicate. Make sure you're all yeah. on the same page. Make sure you're. You have the same plan. Things are going to change during the day. So make sure you're communicating. Mm -hmm. It's not, I, again, it's, it's not hard. (laughs) Yeah. Um, and if you're not commuting and communicating, you are, you're not allowing them to help you. Mm -hmm. Um, agreed. Does that make sense? Like they're, yeah. Yeah. If, if, if you're not telling them what you need, they can't give you what you need. Exactly. Exactly. They can't give what they don't know. Yeah. So, yeah. You should go up to them and say, I'll tell you what I want. Exactly. What I really, really want. (laughs) So You're good. Okay. So, um, yeah, let's talk about how how we actually do some specifics. So I'm going to start with the DJ. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Announce for people to keep their phones away. This is not a difficult thing, uh, but it can make a significant difference for the photographer. Uh, Just not that that hard to do. Um, Right. Also... The DJ should stay out of photos. Agreed. The best that they can. Yeah. There are a few photos that you can't get away from. And I sure. think I think it's important for people to have photos of their DJ. Yeah. Um, because they're we're part of the day, but 
I don't particularly want to be in their cake cutting photos and their right. dance photos. And right. that's not my moment. That's their moment. Yep. Um, I so, so there's that. And then I think also for me, something I always do is I check with the other vendors before I start something. Mm, so yeah. cake cutting, I just kind of lock eyes with the photographer. I'm like, you good? Right. Mm-hmm. And anybody else that needs to be part of that. So that way, when it happens, the photographer is not like, oh, shoot, my card just ran out. You need to switch it up. Right. Or even like what if photographer is not even there? Yeah. Like, oh, blah. You're just setting yourself <laughs> up for failure. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Planners and coordinators. Yeah. Yeah. I th- think they need, it's important that they make time for everybody to do their jobs. Agreed. Agreed. They're they're coordinating not just the wedding day, but the facilitating of the wedding day. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's important that they they make time for everybody to do what they do. Yeah, well, and I think allowing time for vendors to have the whatever time they need within reason. Yeah. But if they're expecting, like, for you to be set it up, ready to go in, like, 10 minutes, not, that's, that's not going to give the result that they right. want, you know? Um, so being reasonable with that. Yep. I think to do that, they need to understand the value that the clients are placing on each person. Exactly. And what that person needs to do a good job. Mm-hmm. So if the client values the photography over the DJ, then mm-hmm. we need to make sure that the, the timeline is geared that way and yep. the time is allocated correctly. If the reverse is true, where the DJ is more important, the photography is not as important. Maybe we take a little bit of time away from the photographer um, and put it towards the DJ. It's just, as the planner, it's your job to understand what the clients are hiring these people for and how to make that person shine in their job. Yes, I love that. Yeah. Uh, Officiants. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's important for officiants to know how to use a microphone. I agree. Uh, and that is probably going to change from uh, audio person to audio person, depending yeah. on the microphone. Um, they may all look the same. They are They are not the same. They're different mics do different things in different ways. So it's important that the officiants, they listen to what the audio professional is telling them. Yeah. This sounds like a gripe fest. It's not. It's, I just... It's also yeah. going to allow the officiant to do their best job, too. Yeah. Well, and I think, too, whoever has that microphone, it's just as important for them to train the officiant yeah. effectively. Like, if you don't set him up, him or her up for success, then they're just going to fumble with the microphone and right. not know what they're doing. So it's just as much the audio person's responsibility to teach it as it is for the officiant to understand it. I totally agree with that. Yeah. If you just hand the mic off and say good yeah. luck, like you're, yeah. Yeah. Agreed. So. Uh, I think also officiants can support the photographer by just stepping out of the way when they, when it's time to kiss. It is so funny how many times I say get out of the photo and then it happens and it's like, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's just, you forget. But yes, I totally agree. Totally agree. Yeah. Photographers and videographers. Uh, now, this is this can be tricky. Do, I think yeah. the number one job of a photographer is to capture the day. Same with the videographer. However, if in the meantime they get a few photos of the venue or the DJ or the officiant, uh, I think it's good to reach out to them and share yeah. those. Um, we'll talk about how, they, how people reciprocate, but um, mm-hmm. I think that that's a nice thing to do. Totally. It's definitely not something that is expected at all, but it's a nice little step to help other vendors set themselves up for success. You know, as myself with the venue and whenever I'm coordinating a wedding, I do not have photos of what I do. Right. You know, that is just not, it's just not part of my job. Yeah. And so whenever I even go through a gallery and the best example I have is there was a wedding gallery that we received and... It was part of the couple's day, but there's a great photo of me cutting their wedding cake to serve it. And, you know, that is there for the couple as like, oh, look, there's your wedding cake getting served. Um, But as a vendor, I'm like, oh, that's a great tool for like social media, website, whatever it is. Look, we can serve your wedding cake. And, you know, it's not something that I had to get, but it was very appreciated. Yeah, I I think. 
And it's not really an extra thing that they always have to go out of the way to do. They don't yeah. have to pull the the officiant aside and say, hey, let's do a photo shoot with you. It, right, it, right. Most people want sure. candid photos anyway of you actually doing what you do. Yep. So. Yeah, and I think, I mean, we've mentioned it, but you, these, all these people that are working the wedding are for the most part, not people that the couple is just seeing the day of. Mm -hmm. And they likely will want to remember those people exactly. that they worked with. Yep. So you don't need a ton of photos of them, but one or two, it's a good thing. It's nice. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Agreed. Um, and I think also that photographers and videographers, that they understand the timeline and where they fit in the timeline and make sure that they're staying in that lane, right? It, yes. Um, you know, if we have an hour for photos and they take two hours for photos, um, then that is not setting up, it's not setting up the caterer for success because the food's yep. not going to be good. It's not setting up the guests, it, all those things. Yeah. Um, so just making sure, and that really goes for everybody, that you're staying within the what the timeline says. Totally, within. totally. So um, catering. Um, so catering really, again, these are not things that are required, but when you do these things, they do help. Yes, agreed. Yeah, I think based on the client agreement, feeding the other vendors is so nice. Mm -hmm. You know, I I never go into a wedding expecting to be fed, but more often than not, caterers have a buffer amount. And yeah. I mean, most caterers I work with, they bring in that buffer amount for the clients, but also for the vendors. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, it gets a little tricky. Um, you want to make sure it's very clear with the client. There's one example I have is... If they are doing a plated meal or if it's a buffet served by or priced by number. Right. If, you know, sometimes the caterers are like, oh, well, there's a buffer. We don't count the vendors. But if the client doesn't know that and they see you eating food, they're going to just suddenly get a sour taste in their mouth and be like, well, I'm paying for their food. They might not even know that that's not a thing. Mm -hmm. But just having that clear communication with the client is good. But it's also very nice if the caterer is able to feed vendors. Yeah. They're there all day, too. So. It's nice. It's nice. It's not required, but it's nice. Exactly. Um, and some clients, they think about that, too. They think yeah. about, you know, how do we feed people? Um, there have been a few times that they have a table specifically for vendors. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, that's always so nice of, of the clients. Mm -hmm. um, but regardless, if part of the plan is to feed the vendors, uh Making sure that there is silverware, because sometimes there's only silverware on the, yes. the tables, making sure there's a place for them to eat. And mm -hmm. part of that might fall under the venue as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And, and if let's move on to, to the venues. I think, yeah. you know, the phrase that came to mind is this is your house and you should be a good host. Yeah. As the venue, yeah, that you should be there to help facilitate people doing their job in your house. Yes. Well, what we always talk about a lot with our team is it might not be our responsibility, but because it's in our house, a lot of things look like us. That's and true. so, you know, not just the whole like, oh, well, let's set ourselves up for success, but it's it's so simple. You know, there's so many things, even like decorations, like we don't touch decorations, but Guests don't know that. And so if you're, you want to make sure all the other vendors are being successful in what they do or else it's going to look like it's falling on you and yeah. that you're not being successful. Yeah. So you want to help set everyone else up for success so that you set yourself up as well. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. The, so <laughs> this last weekend, um, we were doing a wedding and there wasn't very much power and yeah. because we were in a field and we were in the middle of everybody on the dance floor they were all singing having a great time and the power cut out no and they didn't yell the the venue yeah name they said chris come on chris <laughs> I'm like, you think that i did this like <laughs> really exactly so um yeah I, I i think when it comes to the venue there's a lot of things because they're there on your property they think okay well this is the venue's fault the flowers yep. are in the wrong place the yeah. Whatever. If there are yeah. rentals, uh, like table rentals, chair rentals, yeah, they don't know that. That's exactly. The venue, they think. Well, even like when it comes down to caterers, like a lot of venues do catering in house, so they don't know what's in house and what's not. And yeah. so, if dinner is an hour late, that's gonna look like the venue. Mm -hmm. It's just, yeah, that's just how it is. Yeah, people will say, "Remember that wedding at Labelle? How the the 
the dinner was an hour late, they're not going to say, remember that caterer. Exactly. So it's just so important to set up all the other vendors for success as well. Yep. You all rise together. Yeah. Um, I know Kira here, the Rock Gym has their phrase, we rise by lifting others. And that is just awesome. so true and so good. And how Every perfect is that for a climbing gym? Exactly. <laughs> so it's good. Uh, I think a couple other things that you can do as the venue is um, uh, offer walkthroughs. You yes. know, when, when people ask for it, I think that that's important. Um, because if they're able to do, if they're able to walk through before the day of, they can make yeah. sure that they're prepared on the day of and not stress you out with hectic requests. Exactly. No, yeah. I honestly, if I if a vendor hasn't been to LaBelle Lake, I love to invite them out to see where are they going to set up and just go through the whole day that, you know, anything that they might need to know. Yeah. Um, with that, though, if you are a vendor and you're wanting to come out, don't just show up. Right. Be courteous. Be courteous as well. Yeah. Um, but if it is a venue you haven't been to, it is so beneficial to come and check it out beforehand. Mm -hmm. That way it's not your first rodeo on the day of. Yep. So. Totally agree. Which, by the way, you guys do a great job. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and, okay, these are things that just everybody should do. Yes. Everybody. All first, if a photographer shares a photo with you, tag them. Like, yeah. this is their art. Yeah. Tag them. With that, too, tag any vendor that's in a part of that yeah. photo. I mean, yeah, specifically the photographer, for sure. That should be your number one. But every photo should have some kind of tag. It should be the photographer and then if it's anybody else's work. Yeah, so. I, I agree. And I think beyond that, um, I heard this from a photographer, don't alter that photo. Oh, do not, do not yeah. touch that photo. That's... I, oh, that is a pet peeve of mine. I always have to teach the interns that because they're like, well, this looks cute. And I'm like, don't do it. Don't do that. Don't do it. You take the that off. The <laughs> only thing that you should be doing is cropping. Yeah. And that's because some social media, it's, mm -hmm. that's the format. And even, okay, so, because sometimes with social media, yes, that's the format and it has to crop, but you also need to be so careful cropping. Yeah. Because again, that's their work. And maybe maybe it's this nice big photo and you're like, oh, well, I just want to zoom in on their faces, but you're cropping out their work. Right. So yeah. if it's the social media platform, I think that's to be expected. Beyond that, though, I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't touch it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's also important to pay photographers, pay anybody for yeah. their work. If you are hot, if you're wanting services from any of these vendors separately from the wedding, you should be paying them and not expecting them. I agree. I think it's so easy you know, again, these are kind of like our coworkers and they become our friends. And so it's easy to fall into that friend mentality of like, oh, well, can you just come take some photos for me? Right. No, value their work, pay them for their expertise and move on. If yeah. they decide they want to cut you a deal, let them make that decision, but don't expect it. Right. I, totally. And I think you should say like, I'd love to hire you and pay you whatever your normal rate is. So yep. they don't feel like you're asking for it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> pay photographers, respect them, um, and make sure that you're tagging them. I think that that's, that's a good thing. Agreed. Uh, Agreed. I, I have, I will say this. I have had a couple of times where I've got this really amazing photo and I want to use it for my website or for an advertisement or something like that. Yep. And I'll reach out to the, the photographer and say, hey, can I pay you for this because I want to use it without attribution? Yes. And most times, if I have a good relationship with them, they'll say, totally fine. That's yep. great. Don't mind. But on the flip side, I'd be more than happy to pay them for that photo. Right. Good photo. Exactly. So, yeah. Yep. Agreed. Uh, okay. So this this is in regards to venues respect their property just like we said this is your house yes please this is their <laughs> house like this is yeah where they work this is like you wouldn't go to target and mm -hmm. dump a soda on the floor and just walk away hopefully not if you do you're a trash person yeah right? yeah so you wouldn't you wouldn't do that at Target. why would you do that at a venue just leave like a bottle of beer like on like why would you do that oh i've seen so many things yeah, I I know. <laughs> yeah, no, and it's just so hard too because we have we have processes in place for clients. You know, we have a card on file, we have a security deposit. Like, you have those processes for clients. But what happens if a vendor hurts your property? Yeah, like you don't you don't want to charge the client for that. That wasn't their fault. Right. But it's 
That would be the only person, though, if they damn it. Exactly. So to... just, just be a nice person. Right. At the very least, like sometimes there was, again, at, at the wedding the other night, there were no trash cans around. Right. And so I did, ha- I had some like cans of, of soda that were behind yeah. my station. Um, so I at least put them on a table. Like, yeah. At least be yeah. respectful. And... Be respectful. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I think just, you know, it's so important. Maybe clients, I can see how it can get, you know, sometimes they think, oh, well, the venue's here to clean up after us. And sometimes that's true. Sometimes that's not. Regardless, it's the client, whatever. Yeah. But as a vendor, don't be like, oh, well, pick up my trash. And I don't know, just be a good person. Yeah. They're your coworkers. They're not your servants. Exactly. So. Um, I, I think also that you need to respect the experience of the other vendors. So yes. if there is a photographer that's saying, right now the light is amazing. I've never seen it like this. I need to take them for a photo. Yeah. I think you need to say, all right, I'm going to make it work. Let's. I, I, I don't know I how agree. we'll do this, but we'll make it work. Um, the same with the venue. The, yeah. If the venue saying, trust me, we've tried doing this layout and it just doesn't work the way that you yeah. think. Um, same with the DJ. But yeah. I don't well, think I mean, he's doing like, Yeah. If, like, let's say, DJ, you're having a killer dance party. Yeah. Everyone is having the time of their life. And if that is important to the guest, you're not going to come in and go, it's time to cut the cake. Right. Like, <laughs> you know. Yeah. You know, you just, you want to help give, you want to let the vendors use their expertise. Yeah. And shine. Yeah. So. And I mean, you should learn from that too. Yeah. You should learn like, oh, I did never thought of doing it that way. But the vendor said, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I think also we need to step up to help other people. Yeah. Um, especially when someone is struggling. There is a wedding I did in, uh, it was a few years ago. And they had a photographer there that this was her first wedding. Mm. I don't think the client knew that. But it was like 10 minutes before the ceremony was supposed supposed to start. And I we, we couldn't find the photographer. Oh. Where is this photographer? Yeah. Maybe I've told this story on the podcast before. But uh and then I saw this girl sitting with a camera and I was like, she looks like a photographer. Yeah. It, at least her camera does, right? So I walked up and I said, hey, are you so-and-so? And she said, yeah, that's me. I'm like, oh, you're the photographer. Fantastic. I'm glad you're here. Um, oh. We, we're we about to start. Do you want, they're still like putting on the finishing touches on the dress. Do you want to get some pictures of, of the dress? And she's like, oh, that's a good idea. And think of that. I'm like, well experience would tell you to think of that yeah but you're new right Mm -hmm. so and also if she has a job to do the worst thing to do at that point would be to say what are you doing sitting here what is wrong with you right yeah like you can have that conversation later right but in that there's no place for that then support them yeah and and help them and in fact with that photographer she actually ended up not doing a great job um Mm -hmm. and the client said the client I'm I'm close with them and they said um yeah the photographer did a terrible job and these are the reasons why and I reached out to the photographer for photos for yeah. the album and she said yeah and I don't know why but they asked for their money back and I said if you'd like mm-hmm. I can share some feedback with you yeah uh, and I was kind but I was honest about it yeah and I feel like that is also very important to set somebody up for success uh, yeah. And she ended up realizing that she didn't want to do weddings. She wanted to do like just bridals and family photos. That's fantastic. It's like you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. So. Yep. Um, no reason to make them look dumb. No reason. Just step in. Help yeah. where you can. Um, There's no reason as well to make them look dumb to the client. Oh, for sure. I hate that. Yeah. But it just it feels slimy it doesn't feel good there's you know there's no reason for you to go to the client and be like oh well they're i mean like one example that's not didn't happen but you know you don't want to go to the client and be like well your caterer's late and they're not here and you know handle it professionally a lot of times i am about little white lies caterer yeah. might not be there yet but just be like oh i'm sure they're on their way i'll go check in you know but there's no reason to be like well they're late they didn't understand this or whatever like just be a nice person. <laughs> so, okay, story about that. Um, I did a wedding with Sierra, who we had a, yeah. a podcast with a few times ago. And um, the there was a mix-up with the caterer. Yeah. 
dinner ended up start, starting, I think it was two hours late. Oh. And, you know, the at first, people were starting to dump on the caterer before she was even there. Mm-hmm. And Sierra, she stepped up and she's like, no, there's no need for that yeah. right now. Like there, we can figure stuff out later, but That's awesome. we all need to be a team and support her. Right. Right. Um, things happen. You're going to make mistakes. We yeah. need to be supporting her. And because of that, we all rallied around. And um, I think, you know, the caterer did a fantastic job recovering from from the mistake that was made. Um, and it, it turned out just fine. And yeah. the bride and yeah. groom didn't know until the end of the night. Really? Yeah. We That's all awesome. got together as a team, figured out a plan and yeah. made it happen. Right. Yeah. So I, I think that, you know, those things are going to happen. And hopefully you never have a big mistake like that. Right. But if you do, I sure hope that there are vendors around you that are trying to make you give you the best opportunity to recover. Agreed. I will say, too, I think it's important to think, you know, again, I'm not about pointing fingers, but sometimes it looks like the vendor's fault and it is not the vendor's fault. I had a wedding where the bride was like, oh, like I dinner was supposed to be at five. Where are they? Blah, 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 blah. And I call and I check in and they say, um, well, we have it contracted for six o'clock. Right. And so, of course, it's going to look like the caterer's fault, but it's important to not just assume, oh, well, caterer's an hour late. No, in their mind, like not in their mind, but on a contract paper, yeah. it says six o'clock and the client was wrong. Yep. You know, and so it's important to not just instantly point fingers. Yep. So. Agreed. Um The last thing that I'll say that everybody should be doing or not doing, I guess, is overstepping. Don't Mm -hmm. overstep into somebody else's territory. Yes. Um, You know, don't don't start posing people as the DJ. Don't start posing people. That's not your job. Right. Um, Just just make sure that you are supporting somebody if they need help, um, but not overstepping and taking somebody else's power away. Agreed. Agreed. Um, Okay, we kind of talked about that already being neat and organized. I think that's just a good general rule. Yeah. Being neat and organized. Um, there's this, I think I've mentioned before, but there is a secret rivalry that I don't think photographers know about from DJs. <laughs> DJs take a lot of pride in setting up their their booth yeah. and make it look all pretty. And so often a photographer will come and put their bag right in front of it. Yeah. It look all messy. So DJs have this like secret hatred at that moment for photographers. Yeah. Um, but if you're doing your job, the DJ will have made a place for the photographer to put their stuff, exactly. right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, being neat and organized. Um, and then I think also speaking positively about the other people that you're working with. Yeah. To everybody, the client, the other vendors. Everybody, yeah. yeah. Uh, yep. And that what's that old rule? If, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Yeah, it's a good rule. Same thing, right? Um, and of course, not speaking negatively. There sure. are definitely vendors that I've worked with that I didn't have a positive experience with. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that I need to to advertise there's, that. There's just no place for it, honestly. Yep. There's no place. And you never know who's listening. Yeah. <laughs> never know yeah. who's listening. Or who knows somebody and it's just, there's just no place for that. Yeah. I think what it comes down to is be nice and be aware of your surroundings. Agreed. Agreed. So people go be nice. Go be nice. Go do weddings and be nice. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's what we've got today for how to support other vendors. Uh, Yeah. Thanks for listening. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Top Secret Wedding Podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review us, and we'll see you next time.